Good morning and welcome to our WITS Faculty of Science virtual open day. Um, you are the class of 2021 and I'd like to welcome you as future WITSies. Um, we live in surreal times. Uh, we are doing an online experience and we, I'm very excited to engage with you in this virtual forum. So today's program is a show tell a question and answer experience. We will be showing you what the faculty and the university has to offer you. And we've got a whole range of panelists, um, both academics and people in all the other support departments lined up to answer questions um, that you may have. So please note that uh, due to load shedding, the video and audio feed might become interrupted for um, some of our participants um, at some point. Um, I apologize for that, but um, unfortunately, um, that is beyond our control. Um, so I would now like to welcome our Vice Chancellor, Professor Adam Habib, and the Dean of the Faculty of Science, Professor Nithya Chetty, um, who have messages for you. Students, prospective Vitsis, I hope you are well and keeping safe. We live in surreal times. I truly would not have expected to come to you in an online format and via video. But we live in these circumstances. And while I might complain, I'm sure it's much more difficult for each one of you. This is one of your momentous years. You would have loved to have the opportunity to have a metric dance. You would have loved to spend your last year with many, more, with many of your friends and fellow students. But unfortunately, you too have to operate in these stressful conditions in an online format. Because, you know, in a lot of ways, this is a foretaste of things to come. And all of our challenges in this world are going to be transnational challenges. Whether we're talking about climate change, whether we're talking about public health and pandemics like the one we're going through, whether we talk about inequality or political and social polarization, each one of those challenges are transnational. And what we're going to need is great science and an understanding of context. We're going to need great technology, but we need to cohere as a human community if we are going to succeed in addressing those challenges. And truly, that's why I want you to think about coming to WITS, because WITS is one of those really great institutions that captures the world, that builds, if you like, the bridges of solidarity. It is an institution beyond race, beyond class, beyond gender, beyond culture. It brings people from all of South African society and from all of the world together. It is both cosmopolitan and demographically representative. And that's important if we are going to build the bridges of human solidarity. Just think about it. In this pandemic, where are the clinical trials happening? In this pandemic, where is the debates on economic policy happening? In this pandemic, which institution is preparing the kinds of protective equipment for our frontline workers? We at the forefront of addressing the challenges of this pandemic. And the reason we can do it is because we do great science, we produce great technology, we produce great graduates, but simultaneously, we represent all of South African society. Are we political? Yes. But how can you not be political in this world? If we are going to address the challenges of our time, we need to be both political but we need to be socially grounded. We need to be economically literate. We need to be scientifically grounded. And we need to be technologically adept. We need to bring world-class science and local understanding in one cohesive, coherent package. So I like to wish you all the luck in these exams. Think of it as an entrance to WITS. Because actually, not only will WITS do great things for you, it will enskill you to transform our world. So all the luck 
and I look forward to seeing you at WITS in 2021. Hello, metric applicants. My name is Nithya Chetty, and I'm the Dean of Science at WITS University. Today, we meet virtually under these extraordinary circumstances brought about by the coronavirus. I hope that you are safe and working hard despite these setbacks to secure your future. And I would like to wish you all the best in successfully completing your high school studies and securing a place at WITS, which is a leading university in the world. A degree from WITS is a passport to the world and will open doors for you in incredible and unimaginable ways. You need only look at what our alumni over the past almost 100 years have gone on to do to convince yourself that WITS does indeed give you a significant edge in your professional life. You have applied to the WITS Faculty of Science. I'm sure, as with most students your age, your application choice is probably still contested in your mind. Is this the correct decision? Would this decision have a lasting impact on my life? What if it's a wrong decision? The Bachelor of Science degree at most times is not linked to a regular career choice such as doing law and becoming a lawyer. The BSc degree has the benefit of opening a range of possibilities that you can one day navigate yourself around. It opens an unparalleled range of choices. This is an exciting time to be in science because science drives the modern world. It always has and it always will. Scientific research over the past more than 100 years has been the basis for the modern technical innovations that we so enjoy today, which many unfortunately simply take for granted. What about the future of science? The many major challenges facing humanity today, largely brought about by the ever-increasing population and the enormous pressures that this is putting on our limited resources and on our environment. And you can be assured that scientific research is going to be the basis for finding sustainable solutions. The Faculty of Science leads the country in studies of our natural surroundings and the impact of climate change. We are seeking newer energy sources and finding more sustainable means to secure our livelihoods while protecting our delicate natural ecosystems. Water research in the faculty is critically important for the semi-arid conditions that we face in South Africa. Data science methods and machine learning artificial intelligence are important emerging new endeavors to help with decision making in a wide range of activities and these ideas have their roots in science. A degree in science is an investment in your life. So very briefly then, I want to say that there are 10 schools in the Faculty of Science. I like to think of these in terms of clusters. Firstly, we have the Mathematical Sciences Cluster that comprises the School of Mathematics, the School of Computer Science and Applied Mathematics, and the School of Statistical and Actuarial Sciences. Next, we have the Physical Sciences Cluster that includes the School of Physics and the School of Chemistry. The Biological Sciences Cluster comprises the School of Molecular and Cell Biology, School of Animal, Plant and Environmental Sciences. And finally then, we have the Earth Sciences Cluster involving the School of Geosciences, the School of Geography, Archaeology and Environmental Studies, and the Evolutionary Studies Institute. All schools are actively involved in pursuing research at the highest international standards. It is within this milieu of excellence that we develop postgraduate students up to the highest levels, including at the PhD levels. We are extensively involved in undergraduate teaching, and some of our service classes are rather large, involving more than a thousand students in some instances. Increasingly now, our academics are being called to share in their administration of our schools, and we expect our academics to be strongly involved in engagements with society in our public outreach programs. As an incoming undergraduate student, you will need to choose a major subject that you will graduate in. Some students choose two majors. That is what you should primarily focus on for now. What is your major interest and why? You should make your decision based on your own personal love for the subject, because if you don't have a deep desire to succeed in a subject, you probably won't. I think you should pay more attention to your academic interests rather than any financial benefit that can derive from your subject choice. And of course, you should base your decision on your own abilities and aptitude. 
In fact, we have limited places in some programs, for example in actuarial science, where there's a huge interest in demand and the mathematical and, and analytical rigor are high, and so we only accept the very best of students from around the country. You are very welcome to contact any one of our 10 heads of schools to find out more. There are no silly questions, and so feel free to engage to inquire about the wide range of possibilities for yourself. You come to university to get a degree, and at WITS, we want you to, to go as far and as high as you possibly can to secure your future. We all want to live a materially successful life, buy a house, drive a nice car, live a comfortable life, but we also want you to ask the question, is this what life is all about? Is this all that we should be aiming for in our lives? Beyond our own well-being, I believe that we have an obligation to make this a better place for all. There's grave inequality in this world. It is not in our interest. It simply can't be, as a human race, for us to continue to turn a blind eye to this insidious thing of human deprivation that we see all around us. I doubt that our university degrees should be seen simply as a passport for us to succeed selfishly. But I think it should be seen to be a means for us to give back to society selflessly. And as an educated citizen, I hope that you will make an effort to make this a better world for all. And as Dean of Science, that more than anything else brings joy to me when I see our graduates go on to make positive contributions to the society that we live in. I look forward to welcoming you to the Faculty of Science. Thank you. All right, so after those messages by our Vice Chancellor and the Dean of our Faculty, I'm going to introduce the panel um, of um, experts that we have here this morning to answer your questions. And you are welcome to make use of the Q&A box at the bottom of your screen. There's both a chat box and a Q&A box, but please make um, use of the Q&A box, which uh, enables us to answer your questions live. So most of these questions will be answered by the panelists um, by our text, but we will be monitoring the text box and then I will read out some questions and ask the panelists to answer them live if I see that this is a particularly interesting question or one that keeps coming up. So um, if we don't get to your question uh, during the live session today, we are capturing all these questions and we will get back to you as soon as possible after the live session. We will direct these questions uh, that we don't get to answer today appropriately and, um, and you will get an answer. So please do make use of that facility. So firstly, I um, neglected to introduce myself. Um, my name is Willem Conradi. I'm the um, Assistant Dean for Teaching and Learning in the Faculty of Science and an Associate Professor in the School of Mathematics. On our panel to answer your questions today, we have um, three um, scientists from the School of Computer Science and Applied Mathematics, Dr. Richard Klein, Mr. Abdul Hamid Karim, and Dr. Hima uh, Valapadi. Um, then we have from the School of Molecular and Cell Biology, Dr. Carl Rumboldt, from the School of Geography, Archaeology, and Environmental Studies, um, Dr. Mary Evans, from the School of Physics, Professor Jonathan Kirtland, from the School of Chemistry, um, Dr. Monika Nowakowska, and from the School of Statistics and Actuarial Science, Professor Stephen Jurich. And then we've got the University Registrar, Mrs. Carol Crosley. We've got the Deputy Registrar, Mrs. Nicolene Potgitter, and the Registrar of the Faculty, um, Mrs. Renee Fosluer. We've got the Senior Manager for Sport, Mr. Michael Dick. We've got the Student Recruitment Manager, Mr. Sershan Nyker. We've got consultants from the Student Enrollment Center, um, Mrs. Faith Herbert and Ms. Um, Doreen um, Boyesens. Uh, then from Student Affairs, we've got Mrs. Tembi Lamini. Um, we've got the head of the Student Enrollment Center, Ms. Um, Ms. Uh, Sharona Makwana. Um, we've got the head of Campus Housing and Residence Life, um, Mr. Basil Mugwena. Um, we've got the manager of Student Finance, 
Mr. Ismail Sivader. And lastly, we've got uh, Ms. Ndiwe Sili from the Counseling and Career Development Unit. So that covers the whole gamut. So please um, ask questions to these people. All right, let's see um, what is coming up in the Q&A here. So I see um, somebody is asking, what is the ranking of, WIT, uh, of the WIT science faculty? So um, a lot of you will be paying a lot of attention to the rankings um, that are published annually. There's a number of uh, organizations in the world that publish university rankings, both at the university as a whole and for the different subject areas in the universities. So um, as you will know, WITS as a university typically ranks among the top two in the country. We tussle with that spot for, um, uh, with that spot uh, with um, UCT. Sometimes we're on top, sometimes they are. Um, in terms of the, the faculty of science particularly, so I, um, I've got here the, um, because I knew this question was gonna come up, I've got uh, the rankings of the various disciplines in the Faculty of Science. So these are rankings that tell you in the world where does um, this discipline sit at the University of the Witwatersrand. So just to bear in mind, there's about 26,000 universities in the world. And if you look at archeology span and anthropology at WITS, we're in the top 100 in the world. So that's in the top 0.5% of institutions in those disciplines. In the earth sciences and marine sciences and geography, we're in the top 150 in the world. So still in the top 1% in the world. Um, in biological sciences, we're in the top uh, 400, so in the top 2%. And the same goes uh, for mathematics and physics and astronomy, which are under the top 450. And then chemistry also comes in under the top 550. So those are just the QS Maple rankings, one of the ranking institutions you will see that this varies according to which institution that is doing the ranking because they focus on different aspects. But suffice it to say, um, WITS is one of the top inst uh, uh, faculties of science in the country um, and actually uh, very high up there in the world. Let's see what else is coming in. Um, ah, how is WITS uh, prepared for the fourth industrial revolution? A very pertinent uh, and uh, topical question. I, we've got uh, Dr. Richard Klein from the School of Computer Science and Applied Mathematics here. So um, uh, Richard, can you perhaps um, answer that question? Yeah, sure, absolutely. Um, yeah, so when, we, when we're talking about the fourth industrial revolution, we're usually talking about things like artificial intelligence, machine learning, and, and different types of data science. Um, and, and the disciplines that are really involved in this all live within the mathematical sciences. Uh, and that's, that's really where you would, you would really focus on, on things like this. And so usually within computer science, applied maths and statistics. Um, within computer science, we have a very strong focus on intelligent machines. Um, and, and we have a number of, of people who are part of the Bits Institute of Data Science, um, the Rail Lab, Prime and Silex Labs. Uh, and the Faculty of Science itself is also host to the Center of Excellence in Mathematical and Statistical Sciences. If you take a degree in, um, uh, for example, in a BSc Computer Science, you would do a number of, of programs in machine learning. And so you would do machine learning and, and high performance computing uh, from third year onwards. Uh, in honors, you would do topics such as adaptive computing, uh, machine learning, robotics, computer vision, natural language processing, reinforcement learning, supercomputing, um, human computer interaction, and even effective computing, where we're thinking about uh, computers with uh, uh, emotional intelligence, even. Um, we offer a number of different programs uh, related to data science uh, and, and kind of the fourth industrial revolution. Um, and, and once you get to the honors and master's levels, you could do, uh, you, you could be looking at, for example, an honors in big data analytics, uh, as well as master's programs in artificial intelligence, master's in data science, and master's in robotics. Uh, we also host the, um, the uh, NetTTP, NetTTP platform, um, which hosts a new degree, which is a master's in e-science. And that's a collaboration between 
uh, six different universities around the country where, where master's students from uh, various backgrounds in computer science, statistics, physics, uh, electrical engineering, social and business science and humanities. Um, they, they come to the two VITs and they do our uh, courses in, in these kind of subjects in machine learning and these things. Um, and then they go back to, to their universities and do uh, uh, various research projects in data science uh, back at their home institutions. And we also have another, a number of partnerships uh, outside of, of the university that, that the Faculty of Science contributes to. And so we're heavily involved in the Deep Learning in Dava, which is the largest artificial intelligence teaching event in the world. Uh, and in fact, two of our lecturers in Kazam are, are founders of that. And the first one was held at WITS. Um, there are also very strong ties to the Shemolochong uh, Digital Innovation Precinct. Um, and their partnerships out into the Bits Business School with their chair in digital business, as well as the Donald Gordon Medical Center. And so there are a number of projects that range from um, digital business through to medicine uh, as well. And then as well, there are a number of other projects in, in things involving um, data science and, and statistics and chemistry and physics, geosciences, um, and, and a number of the other schools across the faculty are all working in, in collaborations in, in this kind of space as well. Thanks, I hope that helps. Thanks, Richard. I think that uh, answered the question very well. Uh, the next one that I see coming up here relates to the, um, to the ongoing uh, COVID-19 pandemic. So, uh, People are asking, how will classes work next year? Will they be online? Uh, what changes will be they, they be due to COVID-19? Uh, and what measures are there in place to manage um, the virus spread? So I think I'm going to refer this one to our university registrar, uh, Mrs. Carol Crosley. Carol, can you take that one for us? It's Carol speaking here and welcome. Thank you very much for the opportunity. Um, I think that uh, WITS is first and foremost a face-to-face -face university, a contact university. So to answer the question, are we going to be online next year? We would like to think that depending on where COVID goes and what our country is facing at the beginning of next year, we would like to think that we will be having face-to-face -face lectures and that um, the university will be open for classes, face-to-face -face classes. However, we, we do realize that along with the rest of the world, we don't know what to expect fully. So we are preparing for the, the situation or the scenario where we may have to have limited number of students in class, whereas some students might be doing stuff online. The university is not anticipating having to be fully online, but it is a difficult answer to give you right now because I think a lot depends on how COVID um, unpacks itself in the next few months. You will know that this year we had to merge into what we call emergency remote teaching and that has been run quite successfully for us. We're also waiting to see how things will pan out before the end of the year because some of our classes and some of our programs, it's very difficult to do it all online, particularly in the Faculty of Science where there is um, a lot of laboratory work, there are field trips that need to be taken. So the university is also working quite hard at the moment to ensure that our students are able to, before the end of the year, participate in some of those particular activities. Um, Willem, I hope I've answered that question for you. Thank you very much, uh, Carol. I think that answers the question. Let me see what's um, coming up next. Um, how many places are available for uh, particular degrees? Um, and will that be increasing the number of uh, places uh, due to the COVID-19 epidemic? Um, I think let's um, ask the faculty registrar, Mrs. Renee Foster, um, to answer that one. Renee? Um, good morning, everyone. The Faculty of Science receive more applications every year than the available spaces we have. We will be able to admit about 980 new first-year students at the beginning of 2021. And certain 
uh, programs are more popular than other programs, and these programs are our restricted programs. I'll mention a few to you. Uh, the BSc in the field of actuarial science is very popular, and we can take about 180 new students every year. Um, the BSc in the field of computer science is just as popular. We will be able to take 350 new students next year. But we've also started offering this program part-time for WITS Plus, where we will be able to take 70 new students. Uh, equally popular is the BSc in the field of chemistry and chemical engineering. We will be able to only take 40 students for that next year. And once a student has completed this, they can actually transfer to the Faculty of Eng Engineering and the Bolt Environment. Another program I will mention is the BSc in Biological Sciences. It's a very popular program. Students specialize in either animal, plant and environmental sciences, or they can uh, specialize in chemistry, or perhaps in molecular and cell biology, just to mention a few. Um, whether we will be able to accept more students next year, we will not be able uh, due to uh, limited capacity and space available. Willem, I hope I've answered your question. Thanks, Renee. I think that about covers it. Um, so next, quite a practical question about applications. Uh, when will I get a response uh, or offer once I have applied? So I think we need to ask the um, enrollment uh, or admission consultants here. So either um, uh, Mrs. Faith Herbert or Doreen Boyens could you answer that question for us? How long after I get a response or uh, I, after I apply do I get a response or an offer? So when you have successfully submitted your application, you are able to get an acknowledgement letter the following day after you've submitted your application. So the letter will have your personal details as well as the subjects that you, the courses that you've applied for. So you need to make sure that um, the letter is reflecting correctly the courses that you've applied for. And you'll also see your assigned admissions consultant. So this, uh, the details will be on the top right of the letter. And then if you realize that maybe, for instance, you don't see the courses that you've applied for, you're able to email your admissions consultant and thereafter let them know that you're not seeing any courses or you'd like to make any further changes to your application. Thank you. Thanks, Faith. I think I've got another one here, either for you or Doreen. Um, it's about grade 11 results. Uh, will grade 11 results prevent me from getting into VITS, um, if you could answer that for us. Okay, so grade 11 results wouldn't prevent you from getting into VITS. However, we need to make sure that you have the right subjects. So for example, um, for other courses do not, uh, they consider physical science like your actual science. So if you don't have physical science, then your application will definitely be unsuccessful. And then another thing is that the Faculty of Science does not consider mathematical literacy. So you must have uh, pure math as well. Other than that, if you have the required subjects for the particular course that you've applied for, and if currently your results are below the requirement, we're still able to review your application once we receive your final grade 12 results. Thanks. Thanks, Faith. I think that clears it up. Um, another question, again related to the disruption caused by the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, will the 2021 academic year start later? And if so, when will that start? So I think, yeah, yes, I see your video is coming on. Uh, Carol, can you please answer Thank that you. one for us? Yes. So um, matriculants, we certainly at this stage are planning to start the year later. You will have heard from the Minister of Education, Basic Education this last week um, that the matric results are coming out, expected to be around about the 23rd of February. And um, so then we will be receiving your results, we'll be making offers, we'll be expecting you to accept the offers, 
And essentially, we are anticipating at this stage that the term will probably begin around about the 8th of March, because we need to give you an opportunity to make your plans, um, to do orientation, registration. So, Willem, I think the answer that I can give there is that we are expecting around the 8th of March. Um, obviously, bearing in mind that circumstances may change that are beyond our control, but as far as we're concerned, we're expecting the 8th of March. Thank you. Thanks, Carol. The 8th of March, start to the new academic year then. Okay, about residences. Um, I think this might be one for um, the Director of Campus Housing, Mr. Basil Noguena. So the question is, will residences be open next year? Basil, could you take that one first? Uh, well, um, in, in as much as it's difficult to tell, but judging by what we are dealing with now, we are very positive that residences will be open next year. We are currently operating at 33%. We are likely to be going to lockdown level two, where we'll be at 66%. Judging by that trend, by the end of the year or January latest, we should be at level one, such that the uh, residences will be fully functional uh, next year. We, we're ready to welcome our first year groups. Thanks very much. Well, that's certainly good news um, that the residences, well, we hope, will be at full capacity starting next year. Thanks, Basil. Um, then another question I see about um, actual applications, the practicalities of that. Um, uh, maybe, Serona, you could answer this one. The question is, um, what if I don't see a program or a degree choice on the application form? How can I choose a specialization? Serona? Thank you, Valen. So the BSc degrees offer a variety of specializations. Sorry, I didn't put my video on, sorry. So I just wanted to advise the applicants that the BSc degrees offer a variety of specializations uh, ranging from Bachelor of Science, Biological Science, Earth Science, medical, Mathematical Sciences, and Physical Sciences. So if you are interested in biochemistry, and cell biology, you will select biological sciences. For an example, again, if you are interested in material sciences, you will select physical sciences. So basically we need to know the interest of the applicants to advise them appropriately. For further information, uh, applicants can uh, access our undergraduate guide, which is accessible on our website. Alternatively, they can contact the assigned admission consultants. Thank you, Velem. Thanks, Serona. Okay, so there you have it. Um, help is available. If, if you don't see, I want to be, uh, uh, you know, a criminal uh, pathologist, what do I do? Um, you ask the admission consultants, they will direct you to the appropriate degree or program. Okay, next question, very important. I see lots of people are asking about career opportunities in science. Now, of course, this depends on what type of degree in science you're, you're going to pursue. If you, if you do a degree in physics and uh, chemistry, then the career opportunities are different from if you do a degree in mathematics, for example. So I think the best way to, to answer this perhaps is to get some of the academics from the various clusters in the uh, faculty in and um, get them to give you some input on this. So I think let us start with the life sciences. So this is biology and um, microbiology. Um, I'm going to ask uh, Professor Carl Rumboldt perhaps to say a few words about um, uh, career opportunities um, if you study these fields. Carl? Hi, Willem. Yes, uh, career opportunities in life sciences are um, really um, very diverse. Again, as diverse as life sciences are, we uh, offer BSCs in from biodiversity over ecology, conservation, um, um, cell biology, applied bioinformatics, biochemistry, uh, genetics and developmental biology. Um, so those uh, are very diverse degrees and so are the career opportunities in these uh, fields. Uh, if we look at, um, at career op uh, opportunities in the organismal Life sciences, for example, you would see uh, people work as biodiversity planners uh, in biology education. They work for private consulting firms. 
they become scientific journalists or they work for veterinary research institutes, for example. And typical employers would be the CSRR or the Agricultural Research Council, the Department of Water Affairs or um, museums um, as such. And if we look at the, a career, for example, if you decide to go into a, a, um, um, the, a major of microbiology and biotechnology, what would, uh, uh, you know, you would be working in, many of our graduates work in the uh, food industry, brewing uh, and baking, for example, will uh, work in research, for example, uh, in, as, uh, in, the healthcare, uh, in healthcare research. Um, people also work uh, on, uh, on water quality, for example, to look at how, um, um, how our water quality is and, um, and these kind of things. And, but that is all uh, uh, very much depending on your uh, degree. So health sciences um, uh, is, is, is one, of the, uh, one of the big employers as well for microbiology. But uh, it really depends on where you specialize and which majors are you going to take in your BSc in the life sciences. Thanks, Carl. Okay, so life sciences, there seem to be quite a range of things that you can do if you specialize there. Um, let's move on to the geosciences, so geography, uh, geology, archaeology, anthropology. We've got, uh, I think, Mary, Dr. Mary Evans, um, and we saw that these are very highly ranked specialities at Pitts. So I'm going to ask Dr. Mary Evans to perhaps um, tell us a bit more about the career opportunities um, in those fields. Thank you, Willem. Good morning, students. Um, so in the School of Geography, Archaeology and Environmental Studies, we have numerous programs that you can do. Um, we have geography, which is both physical and human geography. Then we have archaeology, which includes archaeology and paleoanthropology. And then we have GIS and remote sensing, all of which lead to very interesting career options. Um, so as geographers, we look at environmental management as an option, climatologists and sometimes meteorologists. Um, a lot of our um, students then go into work for government agencies in policy and NGOs and urban planners as well. For archaeology, we have um, professional archaeologists who also work in heritage management, which is a very key um, area at the moment, museum curators, urban heritage planners. We also look at studies of evolution and anatomical changes on humans. Um, and then the archaeologists also work in the government sector and in conservation. And then our GIS and remote sensing, which is a very key component of our course, um, then work in those areas as well. Thank you, Bill. Thanks, Mary. Um, I think let's move on to the mathematical sciences cluster next. We've already heard about um, the exciting uh, developments in computer science and could be linking to the fourth industrial revolution from uh, Richard. So um, maybe if you can tell us a bit more about the various uh, research or, or career opportunities if one studies mathematical sciences. So there we think of um, mathematics, uh, statistics, actuarial science, applied mathematics, and um, uh, of course, computer science. Thanks, Willem. So in the mathematical sciences, our students work uh, in a variety of fields and sectors, both locally and globally. Um, and like the Dean said in his address, our graduates are comedian-like because they're able to fit into various careers in various sectors. And our graduates from the mathematical sciences are very sought after because uh, of their out-of-the-box critical thinking and reasoning and problem-solving skills. Um, and our students within the undergraduate program are able to develop a proficiency in the language of mathematics. So within the various um, uh, clusters within the opportunities to start with they work as actuaries, as statisticians, they work in life assurance or insurance and risk management, they work as analysts, as actual or statistical analysts, they also work in regulation or in uh, investment management capacities. And there are a wide range of, of, of career opportunities as well there that I, that I haven't mentioned. Then let's move on to computer science. And as my colleague, uh, Dr. Richard Klein mentioned, we are at the forefront in the school in terms of big data analytics and machine learning. And so our students are really well equipped to become uh, 
programmers work as uh, careers in programming, um, as software engineers, as web app, uh, website app or game developers, which is uh, what a lot of our students are interested in. Uh, our students also work as network administrators or work um, in also consultancy roles as cybersecurity consultants. Um, then we move to other in computer science and mathematics. Um, our students, they work predominantly in analytics roles as data analysts, as business analysts, as quantitative analysts. Um, our students are well equipped in terms of, of modeling, and so they are mathematical modelers. And in terms of the virus currently, the, the COVID-19 pandemic, our students work, our graduates work within uh, research institutes and in spaces where they are working on infectious disease modeling to forecast the spread of the disease. So in terms of our, our degrees being current, they definitely will equip you with the skills that you need to face the challenges uh, that we are facing today. Um, our students also work uh, in computational finance um, and supply chain, um, like I said, forecasting and the financial services. Um, and then in the mathematics cluster or the mathematics stream, our students, they work in a wide variety of roles across many industries, in consultancy roles, in service-related spaces, opportunity for you to become an academic lecturer and work at a tertiary institution, or to work as an academic researcher in a um, research uh, institute. Um, so there are many available opportunities. Uh, you can work as a mathematics education consultant, and our students uh, have a wide variety of skills that they are able to access and that they're able to bring to the fore in many of the industries that they work in. So from me uh, and from on behalf of the mathematical sciences, we look forward to welcoming you uh, into our space and hopefully you can make meaningful change and provide solutions to our current problems. Thanks, Philip. Thanks, Abdul, for that rundown of the mathematical sciences. I think let's move on to the physical sciences. So physics first, we've got um, Professor Jonathan Kirtland here. Um, Jonathan, if you could tell us a bit more about the career opportunities in physics, perhaps. Thanks, Willem. Um, <clears throat> uh, am I coming through okay? I can hear you fine. Oh, good, good. Um, you know, they, it's amazing what our, uh, our physics graduates have done uh, in the period that I've been an academic so uh, I've got a list here which I'm, I'm going to go through. Uh, we obviously uh, students would do things like <clears throat> going into academia, getting a postdoc, doing research at a university, lecturing, etc, etc. Uh, perhaps also another obvious career choice would be working in a government laboratory or uh, on the SKA, the Square Kilometre Array, if you're an astrophysicist. Uh, we've had students going into industry uh, with big companies like, uh, like De Beers. Uh, quite a number of, of our graduates, PhD graduates even, have gone into financial modeling and banking. You heard from the mathematical sciences earlier that they specialize in that sort of thing, but there is a, a big demand for, for the problem-solving abilities that a physicist will bring to uh, those spheres. I myself uh, took time out from academia and worked as a software developer and analyst programmer in the United Kingdom. Uh, there are obviously opportunities in, in government. Uh, one of uh, the, the people who uh, did their PhD with me is now a, a DDG in a government department. <clears throat> Pardon me, management. Um, scientists are uh, I guess not natural managers, but certainly we've had very successful uh, people going into management. And then of course, uh, in, in this day and age, entrepreneurship is very important. And I, I can count uh, at least five people who've graduated from WITS during, with physics degrees during my time who've started their own companies. So hopefully that gives you an idea. Physicists can do everything right from rocket science, but unfortunately we can't do brain surgery. Thanks very much for them. 
Thanks, Jonathan. Uh, thanks for that. Um, and let's lastly go to chemistry, since we've got a chemist here, um, Dr. Monika Novakovska. Monika, um, career opportunities if you're a chemist. Hey, good morning, everyone. So a degree in chemistry really opens the door to an incredible range of career options. So just to name a few, apart from the obvious of going into academia and working in government labs, you can go anywhere from medical research and forensics all the way to any environmental kind of research, so geochemistry. Um, you can also obviously into big South African fields of our petrochemical, our mining, our energy industries. You can then even take a completely different turn and go into food and drinks and flavors and fragrances, um, self-care products, all those formulations, cosmetic chemistry. Um, you can also go into things like nanotechnology, that's very cutting edge research or material science where you're constantly creating new materials for other industries. So really the options, your career options in chemistry are just limited by your imagination and we look forward to taking you there. Thank you. Thanks, Arona. Oh, Monica, uh, thanks. I think, yeah, I mean, chemistry is absolutely everywhere in our everyday lives. Um, all right, let's have uh, another question. Postgraduate studies. Uh, should I do postgraduate studies if I study in the science faculty? So should you go on with an honors degree and a master's degree and a PhD degree? Um, maybe, uh, Jonathan, could you take this one again? Most certainly. Most certainly. Thanks, uh, Willem. Um, I have for a number of years been the School of Physics postgraduate uh, coordinator. So uh, I do have some idea of, of what uh, students do, why they would want to do postgraduate study, and also some of the mechanics of it. So I think I'll start off by saying that um, <clears throat> certainly in my discipline, and I suspect the same is true for uh, chemistry and mathematics, et cetera, et cetera, you can't really call yourself a scientist until you've done an honors degree. The honors degree is one year. It, uh, it involves, in general, some coursework and a research project. The research project uh, counts, uh, in general, quite a large percentage of the final mark for the honors year. And it's the, the honors year is perhaps the toughest year in terms of the demands that it makes on your time and on your intellect. Uh, the, anything that comes after that, uh, we always said when, uh, when I was uh, an honors student uh, at WITS in physics, that if you survive physics honors, you can survive anything. And I'm sure that that's true for, uh, for the other disciplines. So once you've got your honors degree, uh, you can of course decide to go off and, and, and do uh, all of the career choices that you've heard about before, but you may want to specialize a little bit more. And uh, <clears throat> what we offer then on the, the Master of Science side is two programs. There's the program where you do coursework and research report. Um, uh, the, this particular option tends to, to be, uh, uh, the popularity of it tends to be very different in the different disciplines. For example, uh, certainly I know in the mathematical sciences, particularly the uh, computer science and applied mathematics part, there's quite a large cohort of uh, of students doing masters by coursework and research report. The, it's, it's less common in my particular discipline and I suspect also in chemistry. So what is the other option if you're going to do a master of science? The other option is to do, a, to do research towards a master's degree in MSc. And if you choose to do that, you'll be focusing on a single project, a specialized project, you will have to choose a supervisor or, uh, or the supervisor will approach you. And uh, <clears throat> what you will have to produce in the end is what we call a dissertation, which is uh, a document, which is anything from, let's say, uh, uh, 
50 pages to 150 pages where you show uh, that the work that you have done makes a contribution to the field, that you understand how to do research. In other words, planning experiments, if that's what you're doing, or, or planning uh, a theoretical calculation or calculations um, or, or, or whatever it is. And you, <clears throat> as I say, you then produce this uh, dissertation. It's examined by people, uh, at least one person who's external to uh, the university. And once you've got that master's degree, of course, you're in a position to, uh, to move into uh, a higher level of your chosen career. Uh, the final level, of course, is the Doctor of Philosophy or the PhD. Um, in terms of the mechanics of it, it's, uh, and getting started in it, it's quite similar to the Masters by Dissertation. If you want to get a PhD though, you have to make an original contribution to your discipline. So all of the, the doctors, uh, the, the people with the, the title doctor and professor uh, in this panel, they've done the, the PhD. And uh, the PhD is examined by three people, at least two of which must be external to the university and one of which must be a, an international expert. And of course, once you've got your PhD, uh, you then can move on to what we call uh, postdoctoral research, or of course, you can move into a, onto a chosen career path. I hope that that answers the, the, the questions for them. Thank you. Thanks, Jonathan. Yes, so indeed, beyond the bachelor's degree, there's a whole uh, other world. And, and I can agree with what you said. My honours year, which was mathematics, was certainly one of the toughest years of my life, but it was absolutely one of the most rewarding years. Um, right, so that, I think, answers um, that question. Um, then a question about finance. So I think I should get um, Mr. Ismail Subader in here. He's the manager for student finance. Somebody is asking, is there any discount for blended or online learning? Um, Ismail, could you perhaps give us an answer for that? Okay, thank you. Good morning, Bolov uh, and uh, students. With regard to, to discounts, the university is currently looking, uh, we don't have anything in place in terms of discounts, but we're currently looking into, in the near future of assisting students, especially if they have more than one sibling at the university. But we do have other measures in place that actually assist students. We have a thing called a payment plan, which allows students to have a 10 month interest free payment option that they can spread their, their payments along the, the 10 months. As long as they meet their commitments, there won't be interest charged on it. We also have a thing called the uh, discretionary fund, which is on the student's uh, self-service portal, where a student can go and register themselves onto this website. And should donors actually give us any funding, and if the student meets the criteria, the student will be eligible for the funding. We also have a platform called the Phoenix, where a student can go and actually register themselves on this platform and market themselves. And this has been a very, a very, very good platform and have assisted students a lot in the in the recent times. So at this point in time, we are looking at uh, in the near future at some of assisting students that have more than one sibling at the university. Thanks for look. I hope I've answered the question. Thanks, Ismail. I think that was quite uh, that covered it. Um, then one last question. Uh, I think we are starting to run out of time. So um, one more. Um, acceptance letters. If I'm accepted, do I get an acceptance letter and how long does that take? Uh, Sirona, could you perhaps uh, answer that one again? Thank you, Valen. Yes, so currently we use grade 11 results to assess eligibility of applicants into the program they have applied for. So if an applicant has been selected and is eligible to study a particular program, that applicant will receive a provisional offer 
pending the final results, which will be uh, officially announced in February next year. So once those results are announced and the applicant is indeed qualifying for the cabinet program, the applicant will receive a firm offer, which means that applicant now has been made offer the space for cabinet program. But those letters, as we assess applicants and applications, we communicate to them and the letters can be accessible on the self-service portal and we also email those letters to them. So they can constantly access the self-service portal to monitor their applications. Thank you, Vela. Thanks, Sarona. So, um... I see there are still a few questions unanswered on the Q&A, so um, don't worry, we will get to your question. Um, uh, if not during this session, we, you will get a response shortly after that. I now want to um, uh, give the floor to um, Mr. Serge Nika. He's the student recruitment manager, just as a vote of thanks, and I think he also has a virtual faculty tour for us, so do hang on for that, but um, Serge will tell us more about that. Great, thanks Prof. So good morning colleagues, learners and parents. Uh, please don't panic if your question wasn't answered during the online session. Uh, the school's liaison office will be following up on these questions and will try our level best to get your answers post the event. So I would like to thank the Vice Chancellor and the Dean for their inspirational words here today. I would also like to thank the faculty for hosting this virtual focus day. Uh, thanks to Prof. Willem Conradi for emceeing the event, all the academics for their support and participation, as well as the administrative and service departments that have helped put this event together. And a special thanks to the PR and events and marketing staff. We would like to thank the parents who have encouraged, motivated, and joined their children online here today. But most importantly, we want to thank you, our applicants, and hopefully our future VTs. We hope that you've enjoyed the event. Now, before I end, I'm going to digress for a minute and talk about time travel. I'm going to disagree with our incoming Vice Chancellor, Prof. Vilakazi, as he said that time travel isn't possible. Now, I'm heading into dangerous territory right now, and I'm going to do this for you and say it is possible. But I'm not going to debate Einstein, Newton, or the world of quantum. I want you to visualize with me for a minute right now, six months into the future. You open up that email and it says, congratulations, you have been made an offer to come and study at WITS in 2021. You start your journey in this brilliant city of gold, the heartbeat of the African continent with its financial and industrial hub, cutting edge contemporary galleries, urban precincts, funky restaurants, cafes, and art studios. You're sitting in the lecture halls where Nelson Mandela, Robert Subukwe, Patrice Mutsepe, and Tuli Maren Salawan sat. You're in the dissection halls where Prof. Philip Tobias and Prof. Sidney Brenner started their medical journeys. You're on the stages where Claire Johnston and Johnny Clegg once honed their musical skills. You already hear on the steps of the famous Great Hall, surrounded by some of the most incredible young minds of your generation, but only because you didn't let this pandemic defeat you. Time travel is possible. You don't need a time machine either. All you need is hard work, dedication, and perseverance. The future is yours. Make it happen. The University of Witwatersrand looks forward to welcoming you here next year. Thank you. Please uh, stay on and uh, enjoy the virtual tour that follows. <laughs>